Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the Fuel EX series. We've got the 5 here and the 8 here. We're out of stock of the 7, but we can kind of compare along. Okay, so here we have the 2020 Fuel EX 8. This is probably one of our most popular selling bikes. This year they've got the Fox 34 rhythm on the front. So you get a nice strong fork with a more travel than last year, as well as rear shock has a bit more travel. They've also gone to the 29 only tires now. So last year you were able to buy it as a 29 or a 27 and a half plus. The plus size has now disappeared and they're just giving you the 29 option with 2.6 inch wide tires. So the 2.6 are becoming more and more popular. This is what comes stock on the Remedy. You're getting a full GX component group set from Tram, so one by 12 on it. It's a really well stocked bike. There's not much more we can really say that isn't, it's a well stocked bike. Um, the aluminum frame handles well, I mean, it works anywhere, it does anything. Um, if you upgrade it to a carbon one like the 9.7 we touched on earlier, you're gonna get some stiffness component, but it's not a huge difference, it's noticeable. But bang for buck, the Fuel X8 gets you a lot of bike. Eagle drive train, because it's with the GX series, you are able to upgrade it very easily throughout the whole part spec to anything higher than that. So you could put a higher end cassette or derailleur arm or shifting unit on it to increase its shift speed or reduce some weight on it. The descending crank is nice and lightweight with a good tooth set on it. You do have room in here to fit an oval, but you're only gonna go up to a 32 max. They do have the new Bontrager line dropper post on here. So the benefit of the new one is there's less wobble in the seat. Uh, previous years there was quite a little play in the seat movement. So it's kind of nice to see that they've increased that. It's a little bit faster, a little bit more responsive, I think. Still cably actuated. Um, nice looking bike though. It does come in a purple color as well. Yeah. Still has the knock block protectors and knock block headset. So it does limit your turning. I've only ever ran into it once doing a really tight switchback. Otherwise, I've never noticed it. And they do still have the flip chip, which are a big difference. So you take this bolt right out, all the way off, and you flip this around, pull the swing arms back, it'll lower it, make it a little slack, a bit better for a downhill bike then. You know, with the increased travel that they've gone with this year, you are getting more and more downhill enduro bike friendly. This is the bike that if you want to do a cross country race, it's still light enough, nimble enough and agile enough to do that. Um, but if you want to do something along the lines of a, a downhill race or an enduro race, you can actually still get away with it. In comparison, we have the Fuel EX5. We'll switch in. So in comparison, today we have the Fuel EX5. This is Trek's entry level full suspension. This is the most affordable full suspension they start with. You're around the $3,000 Canadian, just a little under in the US. And it's a really, really well stocked ride. So you're not getting the full 12 speed on this one, you're just going to a SRAM Dior. Um, which is not a bad setup at all. The SRAM, or the Shimano Dior, sorry. It's not a bad setup. You still get a really great range. They put extended range set on here. Nothing too crazy. You don't get that big 50 tooth like you would in the Eagle, but it's not like it's a bad setup. You've got the RockShox suspension on here instead of the Fox, and you don't have that reactive system that Fox and RockShox and Penske all developed together, but the RockShox Select Plus is still an excellent one. It does have the dev on it branding on it so it's supposed to be a little bit smoother, a little more efficient. You still have the same minnow link flip switch. It is the exact same aluminum frame. So this goes to a 32 instead of a 34. You will get a little more stiffness and responsiveness on the heavier hitting stuff with the Fuel X8 compared to the 5 as well. A downgraded brake. You're still getting a good high quality Sh Shimano hydraulic one and you do get a downgraded dropper post so they go to an unbranded Trans X one, which does the job. There is a little more play in the seat, um, but it works well. It's definitely not as fast as the, uh, the Bontrager one, the line dropper. 
but it's still a really good post. So both bike comes with the XR4. They're really beefy tire, this 2.6 inch wide. You're gonna be able to do anything with this again. It's gonna be fast rolling 29 with a little more aggressiveness than the, the XR4s, which used to be kind of their Enduro only tire. Now they've got the SE line, which goes even softer. This is still a fairly hard compound rubber, so you still gotta get some fast rolling speeds on it. I do like with the Dior system, you do have the option to shift this way or push. So you have your down and then your up, you can either use your thumb and your thumb like SRAM or your finger. I do find when I ride a bike with the Dior, I am switching between using push or pull. Um, it's definitely a cool system they've got going there. You are still an air shock, so no, no worries there. So this is a hard question to answer, but which is the best bike to go with? The Fuel X8 is an amazing bike. Per spec, it is excellent. It has the setup for anything to do with all the way to like an enduro bike, all the way across to something like just straight up cross country, even cruising around town, you're still getting that comfy geometry. The Fuel X5 is just a budget version of it. So if you're tight on cat or don't think you can swing, you know, the five grand this is, this does all of it. It's not as efficient, not as fast, but it's a really well stocked bike. Uh, I'm impressed with it. I've owned a Fuel X5 in the past and I think I'd own one again, no questions. They're both great bikes. I, I don't think you'd be disappointed with either. If you rode this and then rode this, yeah, you'll notice the differences. The shifting is faster. Everything's better on this. It will be better. But the, for the price you pay on this, this is the entry level, mountain bike level. Where I'd start, I wouldn't go any cheaper. You can get cheaper ones from different brands, but then you are really sacrificing your suspension setups and potentially brake setups. Some of them don't even come with dropper posts, which although they're the most unnecessary things on the planet, once you have one, they are the most necessary things on the planet. So don't stress out too much. If your budget can afford the Fuel X8, no issues. I just go with the Fuel X8. It's an amazing one. If it can't and you're really tight, that's when you should look at the seven or the five. Now the seven has a few major, major differences towards the five, where you're gonna to upgrade to the 12 speed, so your gearing will get a bit better. The suspension, minorly better. It's not a huge, huge jump. Um, we don't sell a crazy amount of Fuel X7s. There is quite a few out there, but in comparison to the five or the eight, most people either spend a little bit more and buy the bullet or save a bit and go with the five. The seven is well stuck this year. They have done a good job and we've had one in and it go already, but the price you pay for the five is just a really great price. And the price you pay for the eight is also a really great price. The bike you get here is crazy good. You know, apart from not having carbon fiber on it, there's not much you need to upgrade. Yes, there's obviously higher end shifting sets, but the GX is a really well wrapped brand of uh, shifting and good quality. And same with the Dior, it, it's a really hard tie break between two, two. It just comes down to how much money you want to spend. This purple is the alternate color.